We're going to have Gary, who's going to talk to us about his story and what's happened to him. So, come around and talk to Gary. Somebody who is a super fit cyclist who has got, who can't relate to anybody in here. Today I stand here and I'm six foot three and I weigh 14 stone. Got normal BMI, I've got any medical problems. But two and a half years ago I was 39 stone and 13 pounds. Diabetes, I have sleep apnea, and I have high blood pressure. And I'm told that in your 20s you're supposed to have the time of your life, but my 20s passed me by and there's very little that I could actually do. My future looked bleak, and to be completely honest, I wasn't even sure that I had any sort of future whatsoever. But I dared to dream. It was one evening I was at the Manchester Royal Infirmary, and I had to go for a scan because I was having all sorts of chest pain. And all I had to do was lie there for half an hour, nothing else. But yet, in that half an hour, I was sweating, I couldn't breathe, the mass of my inside just crushed me as I lay there. And I realised at that point that something had to give, something had to change. So I started eating less, and in six months I lost six stone. But I was 34 stone, and I was still a walking health disaster. And I knew that I had to step it up. And I look to be inspired and I look to be empowered, like some of you have done. And I watched the American version of Biggest Loser, and it, and it was a revelation. There was people on there, 30 stone, and they were running, and they were running on mountains, and they were running outside. And I thought to myself, maybe I could do that one day. And I, and I knew that I could do something, I just didn't quite know what I could do. And you know, I kept looking for further inspiration. Something else that inspired me was Lance Armstrong, seven times Tour de France winner, single most successful cyclist ever, and somebody who survived cancer has been given a 30% chance of survival. Together, Lance and Biggest Loser would shape and define my future. I chose to get a mountain bike, and I went for a ride. And that first ride was something I'll never forget. It was one mile, half a mile out, half an hour back, and yet it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I was sweaty, I was humiliated, I was so slow that I was bubbling, and not just the bike, I hastened to us. But do you know what, I was doing it, and I got up the next day, and I wanted to do it again, and I did. And that week, I cycled five miles, and those five miles has got me to where I am today. And it was painful, and it was humiliating, but do you know what, I loved every second of it. Really did. And today people say I'm crazy because of how much I can do, but I've got a real passion for riding my bike. And, and I've come from nowhere, I was never an athlete. And anything I ever entered as a kid, I could not last. But with an unrelenting passion, I built things up. And you know, people would say to me, go out and ride for an hour, and I'd ride for two. Somebody said to me, I should ride for 50 miles, so I rode for 30. And on those long and punishing rides, alone and on isolated roads, I could see that I was rebuilding myself and I was becoming the person I am today. And an athlete was being born in front of my eyes. And I don't believe I'm super talented, but I do believe that you can achieve what you want to. A little over a year later, after losing 15 stone and gradually from the number of cycle, I decided with my good friend Paul over there to cycle in Manchester to Blackpool. I was 25 stone at the time. I'd fought tooth and nail to get to the start line. And yet, I was stood there, and I was still much bigger than anybody else. You know, I was surrounded by super skinny cyclists. 
And I got quite emotional at that point. And, um, and I'll never forget that. And off we went. And actually, I started to enjoy what I was doing. And here was a man who was 25 stone, and he was overtaking cyclists, people fitter than him, skinnier than him, more healthy than him. And, and it was amazing. And that's why I pushed myself a year early, because I'd always planned to do that from starting my journey, but I'd never planned to do it the year that I did it. But I thought, you know what? You've got to get up and you've got to do it, and you've got to get off the couch, and you've got to show yourself what you're capable of. And then, with about 15 miles left to go, um, I, I had nothing left. Nothing left at all. I was done. And I'll never forget, I became really emotional at that point. And I thought to myself, that's it, it's over. I'm not going to finish. I, I couldn't stand up, I couldn't sit down, I couldn't pedal, I, I just couldn't even think straight. And it was at that moment I remembered back to where I was, 40 stone. Sat on the couch watching the biggest news and drunk food all around me. And I said to myself, I want to be like them. And with that, I managed to push along further. Um, but there I am, speed dropping, and I've got crowds of, of riders passing me. And I heard one of them say, Wow, this guy's done. This guy is talking. He's not going to finish. And, and I'm not here to impress anybody. No one's doing what I can do. But one thing I will say is that I won't quit. I just will not quit. And about 55 miles into that ride, I managed to find something from somewhere, and, and I, was, I felt great, I was flying. And I thought to myself, actually, I can do this. I am going to finish. But then about five miles later, my body shut down again. And, and with about five miles left, I went back to the feeling of, of helplessness, of I can't do this, so I feel like I'm going to die. I want to die. What am I doing? And, and I, was at, I was at a walking race, but with Paul sort of at my side, egging me on all the way. We came around the corner, and, and in the distance I could see the big one. I knew I'd made a flat at that point. And um, there was tears streaming down my face, and Paul was at the side of me, and pretending I looked like sand in my eyes. I was like, I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, Paul, get there. And I didn't want to show him that I was crying like a baby. There was tears streaming down my face. And I thought, you can't finish this. You, you can do this. You're hard to do this. And then we turned into the prom, into Stargate, into the finishing straight. And there was crowds of people all the way up both sides. And they were cheering. And they were, they were cheering me. Somebody was cheering for me. And I could see the finish line in the distance. And I turned to Paul and I said, sorry. And I, I sprinted, I've done 64 and a half miles, much, much further than anything I'd ever done in my entire life before. And I was sprinting well over the day long now, and I, I took off. And I crossed that finish line, and I never quit. And no matter how much pain, humiliation, suffering I was in, I never quit. I even got told off for crossing the finish line too quick. <laughs> and I look back today, and, and you know what, that ride changed me. Right change who I am. It made me realise that it's not about how much you weigh. It's not about what you do in the past. It's about what you're doing. And our bodies are amazing. I shouldn't have been able to do that day back in that day. But I, I didn't have the right nutrition, I didn't train enough, but my body just kept going. And here I am today. You need to take a chance just one time. Once you've done it, you'll never be the same again. I didn't want to be defined by my appearance as a big guy. I wanted to be defined by who I am. Today I cycle between 20 and 40 miles a day. And I ride my bike because it's, it's an addiction to me. And if it was a job, it would be the best job in the world. I've got no health issues. My diabetes was weight related. Uh, my sleep apnea is gone. My, my high blood pressure resulted in a resting heart rate of over 130 beats per minute. Today, my resting heart rate is 40 beats per minute. Wow. And people say to me, you're never tempted to go back to where you used to be. But my life is now so full that I couldn't possibly eat anymore because I've got all this, this around me. And I'm happy and I'm confident and I'm healthy. 
compared to myself in any way. Being inspired and empowered to save my life. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone's got. Thank you. If anybody has got any questions, if they approach Gary uh, over the sandwiches, um, I just want to talk to people. Um, that's like two incredible speakers we've had today. That's absolutely amazing stories there. And